Jiu-jitsu, the gentle art that will f you up more than your abusive dad ever could. Whether it's a popped ankle, a wrecked neck, or a bruised ego, you will never again know what it feels like to have a functional body. <laughs> So obviously, you gotta ask yourself the question, why am I doing this theme? Some do it for self-defense. Oh, why, bro, why? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why? Wait. Some do it to get in shape and have a cool hobby to learn. Or if you're a weirdo like me, you do it because you love the pain. But as you might expect, whenever you have all these different reasons that people get into jujitsu, that probably means there's going to be different types of people you will bump into along the way. So in this video, we're going to be going over some of the most common jujitsu people that you will bump into at your local school. Grab a seat, my children. Let's get into this. Welcome back to the channel guys, it's your boy Jedi. If you don't already know who I am, all I have to say is, have you been living under a rock? And nice to meet you. Now if you are a white belt, then you know this person as the bane of your existence. However, if you're a blue belt, then you know them as the source of unlimited fuel for your unchecked ego to grow beyond bounds. Well, most of the time anyways. However, the bodybuilder looks at jujitsu a little differently than most. While most people that do it see jujitsu as a fun hobby or a form of self-defense or perhaps the only sense of regularity that you have in your confusing life during these troubled and depressing times. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. They see it for what it truly is, a way to get in your cardio without having to do any running. The bodybuilder sees squeezing as the answer to all of life's problems. Stuck in somebody's clothes guard? Bear hug. Maybe you've had your guard passed and you're in bottom side control or bottom mount? A bear hug. Stuck in traffic and you're about to be late for your pedicure appointment? A bear hug. Oh, but hold it right there. The bodybuilder knows that this is not a one-way street. They are not only a taker, they want to give as well. And they will be sure to tell you at least three times every single week how a bench pressing will change your life. Yeah, that's right guys. Some of you are probably already sporting a cheeky smile about all the stereotypes we're gonna poke fun at today. From the flashy rashies they always be sporting at class with colors so saturated you'd think they were a skin from Fortnite. To that skunk-like smell that they always seem to have around them whenever they train. But no, we're not gonna do that today. On this channel, we are all about the respect. In between rounds of sparring, you can find them hotboxing their 04 Honda Civic. They're all about that ADCC, EBI, FTW, WNO, HDTV, GSP, DFT lifestyle. They always seem to have a look of confusion about them whenever you talk about the X choke or the bow and arrow choke or God forbid, the worm guard. Their favorite jujitsu competitor naturally is Gordon Ryan followed very closely by the jujitsu competitor, Eddie Bravo. Got he. And if you ever find yourself in the vicinity of one of these people, never ever under any circumstances mention the word mission control or zombie from New York unless you have two hours to talk about the most complex names for the nogi moves that they like to do. From the Eminari role to coffee head control, I mean, who really has the time for that? Maybe they're not all bad. After all, nogi makes for some awesome clips to scroll through on Instagram while you're set in on the toilet, so good on them. Oh. Guys, not enough of you are subscribed, so I can't afford to buy a chair to sit on. Now, most of us, if we're being honest with ourselves, know that our cardio could use a little upgrade. But holy f does this person take that to the next level, where you can only roll for 15 second bursts in the red zone before you have to take a break to catch your breath. This person can keep up that high pace for 10 minute rounds. It doesn't matter if you're a white belt or a black belt, by the end of the round, you will be panting for breath like a fish out of water. Oh. A typical day for them starts off with a short 10 mile run before breakfast. On their lunch break, they'll hit a quick 
CrossFit sesh at the gym. And of course at nighttime, they'll be getting in their 90 plus minutes of hit cardio or jujitsu as the rest of us call it. Now, if you wanna catch one of these people in the wild, all you need to bait them is a kettlebell, rock climbing wall, or even a box for them to do their very creatively named box jumps. Nice job team. But you know, maybe there's a bright side to things. Instead of complaining about how rolling with them makes you so tire wired, you could be using that as motivation to get your fitness up, which honestly will only help you out in the long run. Nah, f that. Oh, what's that? Why do I have my phone on me? You guessed it. It's time for DM <laughs> of the week. This week's DM comes from our boy, Adam. So I'm looking to start my BJJ journey. I was wondering what I should look for in a gym. I'm 41 year old with kids, so I'm not looking to set the world on fire. I just want to minimize my chances of getting hurt while I learn the sport. Not getting a staph infection would be nice too. What I would look for in a gym for you would just be a clean gym where they have showers and you like the vibes. Basically at these days, there's a black belt at every single gym, so you should be in good hands as far as instruction goes. So just look for clean mats and good vibes, and you should be in good hands. Good luck, Adam. If you have a question that you want me to answer in the next episode, DM it to me on Instagram at Jedi underscore himself. I'll link that down below, and I will pick the spiciest question to answer in the next video. Let's get back to it. Okay, now if you've been training for any length of time whatsoever, then you have definitely bumped into this guy before. Now scientists have long believed that this breed of grappler is not an actual human, but a genetically modified breed engineered by our reptilian overlords with the intention of solving every problem that they come across by lowering levels and running forward, smashing their head right through it. Now there are those of us, myself maybe included, who need to be told, hey man, or hey woman, you're not pushing yourself as much as you need to. You need to be a little more about the grind. Put some elbow grease in there. But if you ever tell that to a wrestler, gosh, I'd hate to see what happened. They may end up digging a hole straight to China. Whenever you pull guard in their heads, they're like, now yeah, look at this put Stand up and drive your head into my hips, like a man. When they first start out, they're impossible to sweep, but at least you have the consolation that you can take their back and choke them. But after about six months in, God damn. Like you could be a black belt, but they're just gonna be running circles around your guard. Every time you try to get close, they'll just be pushing you away. Just like me, every time someone tries to get close to me. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not. Now this person is like Elon in Musk. That is if rockets are arm bars, Teslas are Kimuras, and flamethrowers are, well, flamethrowers. Now once you've spent some time on the mats, putting in your blood, sweat, and tears, showing up consistently, what happens is you start to see a little bit of results, and you know, it feels good. I mean, just the idea that you can choke somebody against their will. That just does something for me. But any idea that you have that your jujitsu is halfway decent is instantly slapped out of your head when you slap and bump with this kid. By 14, after only six months of training, he won his first tournament. And by 16, he's beating adult purple belts at will, making them look bad. His jujitsu journey sounds more like an RVCA promo than anything close to what you'll ever experience. But it's okay, you know, not all of us can be at the top of the mountain. Some of us have to beat the bones for somebody else to climb up on top of. Wait, 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 what? He's only 16? He hasn't even gotten his man strength yet, yet he's already rolling like the T-1000? Yo, this is so unfair. I mean, at least whenever they become a black belt world champ at the age of 19 and a half, you can tell everybody about that one time that you almost swept them before they viciously flying triangled you and made you tap like a little boy. Well, maybe leave that part out, huh? Now, one of the main selling points of jujitsu is the idea that technique conquers all. It's not the size of the dog in the fight, but rather the technique that the dog taught himself or something like that. I mean, just take a look at someone like Marcelo Garcia, not only beating, but finishing massive guys like Shanji Roberto, Hariko Rodriguez, even Rafael Lovato Jr. Okay, why do so many jujitsu guys have R's in their name? 
Coincidence? I think not. Anyways, it is not long at all before you discover that you, sir, are not Marcelo Garcia. And you will find out the bitter truth that your gym bro will tell you and your girl will not. Size actually matters. Nice. Which is precisely why the mountain is your second least favorite person to roll with, right behind that guy who smells like he does not know what the hell a shower is. And if you ever see two of them rolling with each other, you know shit's about to go down. It's like watching King Kong versus Godzilla. You don't know exactly what's gonna happen, but you know there's gonna be some explosions, there's gonna be some throws and some buildings are gonna get damaged. But honestly, jujitsu at these weight classes is kinda different than what it is for you. You see, while you're free to pull guard and work your little tutti fruity footlocks, for them, it's the first person to get on top who will always win, as they will easily smash their way by and quickly secure a finish. Sometimes their opponent will even tap to pressure. Now, it may not seem fair, but you know what? That's how the world works, so suck a dick. What's up guys? This is the end of the video. Yeah, that's all I got for y'all today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Now I am curious to know which one of these guys you are. So let me know down below. If this video gave you a little chuckle, perhaps a little smirk, then there's a button right there that you should hit. And if you guys are new around here, greetings, I am Jedi. Smash subscribe, ring the bell to see all my awesome videos and some that really suck but who cares all right guys that's it for the video why am i doing this i will talk to all of you next friday remember stay consistent and you can do anything okay bye